Assalamu alaikum students. Today we will solve the MCQs of thermodynamics chapter 10. First MCQ is work done during expansion of thermodynamic system is. So this is always considered positive. Work done during the expansion is always considered positive and work done during the contraction is always considered negative. So here option A is correct. Second MCQ. Which, of, which one of the following is an example of an open system? So what is open system? The system in which there is a transfer of mass, there is a transfer of mass across it, okay? So we know that animal, plants and human, these three are open systems. So here option B, option D is correct. We know that plants and plants, animal and human exchange material like oxygen, food and waste product with surrounding. That's why this is considered as open system. So here option D is correct. Third. The pressure exerted by the molecule of an ideal gas on the wall of container is due to. So, option A, B, C. So, the pressure exerted on the wall of the container is due to the translation motion. Okay. Let's suppose this is a container and this, these are the two molecules of gas. So, when this molecule collides with the wall of the container, so it will exert pressure on the wall. So, this pressure is because of the translation motion of the molecule. So, here option C is correct. Third, fourth, the average translation kinetic energy per molecule of a gas depend upon. So, it depends only on temperature, okay? When the temperature increase, then the translation kinetic energy will be increased. When the temperature will decrease, then this kinetic energy will be decreased. So, it means that the average translation kinetic energy per molecule depend upon the temperature only. The absolute zero temperature is the temperature at which. Now, look at the option a pressure of pressure is zero only no potential energy of molecule is zero no because potential energy depend upon the intermolecular force internal kinetic energy of molecule cease so this kinetic energy depend upon the temperature okay so when the temperature become absolute zero at that time the kinetic energy the motion will cease and the kinetic energy of molecule will also cease okay it means that the kinetic energy will become zero and uh, we know that kinetic energy of molecule depend upon the motion of the molecules okay so at absolute zero the motion becomes stop and due to which the kinetic energy of molecule ceases so here option d is correct and this pressure depend upon the kinetic energy when the kinetic energy becomes zero so the in turn the pressure will also become zero now look at the next one using the symbols l m T, N, and K for the dimension of length, mass, time, amount of substance, and temperature. The dimension of R in the equation PV is equal to NRTR. So we have to find the dimension of R. Now we have to find the dimension of R, gas constant. We know that R is equal to PV divided by NT. And for dimension of pressure, we know that pressure is equal to force per unit area. And force is the mass and acceleration. Here for mass, we take M and acceleration is meter per second square okay length into time square okay and for area we take l square okay now cancel these two here one will be remaining so the dimension of pressure is m l inverse and t inverse square now put this value here m l inverse t inverse square we know that for volume we use l cube okay and for n number of moles the capital n okay for temperature we use Kelvin. Now look at here. We have to subtract these two. So 3 minus 1 will give 2. Okay. M L square T inverse square and N inverse and Kelvin inverse. So this is the dimension of gas constant. Okay. R is equal to M L square T inverse square N inverse and Kelvin inverse. So here option B is correct. Which one of the following is not the state variable of gas? So here we know that heat and work is not the state variable. Here option D is correct. Okay. Now the first law of thermodynamic is a statement which implies that no heat enter or leave the system. This one is incorrect. The temperature remains constant. No. Energy is conserved. This one is correct. Okay. First law of thermodynamics state that energy is conserved. Okay. So here option C is correct. Which of the following is an isothermal process? What is isothermal process? 
Isothermal is the one in which the temperature remains constant, okay? The pressure and the volume changes, but the temperature remains constant. Now look at here, the pressure must decrease. When the pressure decreases, what happens? The volume increases, while no heat is allowed to enter the system. So here, this one is incorrect for isothermal process, okay? So it means that option A is incorrect, okay? In isothermal process, the heat enters, okay? The heat enters, which, what happened due to which the temperature remains constant, okay? When the pressure decreases, the volume increases, and in that case, what happened? The temperature become decreased, okay? The temperature decreases, so after that, the heat enter the, enters the container that stabilizes the temperature, okay? So the temperature in this case remains constant. The volume is kept constant while the heat is allowed to enter. Now this one is incorrect, okay? The volume changes. So this one is incorrect for the isothermal process. Look at the C. The pressure must de decrease slowly. The volume must decrease while heat is allowed to enter the system. This one is correct, okay? When the pressure decreases, what happens? The volume also decreases. Sorry, this one is increases, okay? When the pressure decreases, the volume increases. So in that case, what happens? When the volume increases, the gas molecule move far away from each other. So in this case, the temperature decreases. When the temperature decreases, then what happens? The heat is allowed to enter the system. So when the heat is allowed to enter the system, so the heat stabilizes the temperature of the gas, okay? So in this case, the temperature remains constant. The first law of thermodynamic can be written as internal energy is equal to Q minus work, change in heat minus change in work. Which statement is correct? Now look at here. U is always zero, internal change in internal energy is always zero when no heat enters or leaves the gas, okay? So, this one is incorrect, okay? This is the case of adiabatic condition, okay? Adiabatic process. In adiabatic process, no heat enters or leaves the gas, but what happened? The internal energy is not zero, okay? The internal energy is not zero in this case, so this one is incorrect, okay? Look at the B. Internal energy is zero when heat is supplied and temperature is constant. This one is correct, okay? This is the isothermal process, okay? In isothermal process, the temperature remains constant, the heat is supplied to a system, and in that case, the internal energy is zero, okay? When the temperature is constant, so in that case, the internal energy is zero. We know that internal energy depends upon the temperature, okay? So when the temperature is constant, okay, so there will be no change in the internal energy, okay? Internal energy will be constant also. So the change in internal energy will be zero. So in this case, option B is correct. C option is work is negative when heat leaves the system. No, work depend upon the expansion in the contraction of the system. It do not depend upon heat leaves or the heat enter the system. So this one is also incorrect. Heat is positive when heat leaves the system. No, heat is negative when heat leaves the system. Okay, so this one is also incorrect. The molar heat capacity of an ideal gas is greater at constant pressure then at constant volume because here additional energy is needed for external work okay here option a is correct the efficiency of Carnot engine is independent of so look in case of Carnot engine efficiency is equal to 1 minus t2 divided by t1 so it is independent of the working substance, okay? So option D is correct here. It depends upon the source temperature and the sink temperature, okay? Efficiency depends upon the source and the sink temperature. So independent is the working substance. If Cv is equal to 5 divided by 2R, then gamma is equal to Cp divided by Cv for diatomic gas is. Now look at here. F is equal to 5 for diatomic gas, okay? What is F? F is the degree of freedom, okay? Degree of freedom is equal to 5 for diatomic gases. Now look at here. Here, the formula for Cv in term of degree of freedom is equal to F divided by 2R, okay? This is the formula in terms of degree of freedom. And look, the gamma is, this is the ratio between Cp to Cv, okay? Gamma is the ratio of Cp divided by Cv. Now look at here. The value of Cp, Cv is given, okay? The value of Cv is given. Look here, the value of Cv. In place of 5, F, they have put 5, okay? This is the degree, the value of Cv for diatomic cases. Now we have to find the value of Cp. Cp is equal to Cv plus R. 
Now, in place of C, we put this value, okay? It will be 5 divided by 2R plus R. When you take the LCM of both, you will get CP is equal to 7 divided by 2R. Now, put these two values in here in the formula. Gamma is equal to CP is 7 divided by 2R, okay? And CB is 5 divided by 2R, okay? Now, gamma is equal to 7 divided by 2R multiply 2 divided by 5R. So, this one will cancel each other. Now, gamma is equal to 7 divided by 5. Look, this is the value of gamma for diatoms, okay? For diatomic case, this is the value of gamma. Now, look at the options. Here, option B is correct, okay? For diatomic, the value of the ratio of CP to CV is 7 divided by 5. Okay, th there is also another formula, 1 plus 2 divided by F, okay? In order to find the gamma, this is the shortcut formula. F is the degree of freedom. For monoatomic atom, monoatomic gas, F is equal to 3. For diatoms, F is equal to 5. And for polyatoms, full polyatomic gas, F is equal to 6, okay? So in order to find the gamma, this one is the formula. For diatomic, put here 5 and you will get 7 divided by 5 value. Now 14. By increasing the temperature of the source, the efficiency of Carnot engine is increases, okay? When we increase the efficiency of source, the temperature of source, then the efficiency of Carnot engine will be increased. Now look at here. This is the efficiency of Carnot engine. Now look. Efficiency is directly proportion to T1. How? This is because here the negative sign means the inverse, okay? When the negative signs come, then you have to you have to write like this, okay? These two will be direct relation and these two will be inverse relation, okay? When the negative sign come, okay, in the expression, then you have to just invert the, these two, okay? So efficiency is directly proportional to T1 and efficiency is inversely proportional to T2 because here the negative sign comes, okay? And negative sign means inverse. That this equation must be inverse in order to find the proportionality, okay? This equation must be inverse in order to find the proportionality. So efficiency is directly proportional to T1 and efficiency is inversely proportional to T2. 15. Which of the following conclusion results only? When the ideal gas law and kinetic theory of gases are both considered to apply. Here option B is correct, okay? In case of ideal gas law and kinetic theory of gases, pressure is equal to 1 over 3 density into average V square, okay? This is the speed, average V square. And this row is the density. So here option D is correct. You just memorize this formula, okay? Its derivation is very much lengthy, okay? 1 over 3 rho v square, average v square. It is desired to increase the volume of given weight of carbon dioxide at 40 degrees C to 3 times of the original volume. Under the constant pressure, the temperature should be raised to. Now look at here, T1 is given 40 degrees C and V2 is 3 times of the V1, okay? We have to find the T2. Now look, V1 is divided by T1 is equal to, V2 is 3 times of the V1, so 3 V1 divided by V2, T2, okay? Now bring this T2 here and this one here. So T2 is equal to 3 V1 divided by V1, okay? And bring this T1 here in multiplication, T1. Now cancel these two, you will get 3 multiply T1. But first of all, you have to convert this degree C into Kelvin, okay? When you convert this degree C into Kelvin, you will get 40 plus 273 multiply by 3. So you will get 939 Kelvin. Now convert this Kelvin into degree C, subtract 273 from this one, okay? Subtract 273. So you will get 666 degree C. Keep one thing in your mind that Conversion of this is very necessary, okay? You have to convert the 40 degree C into Kelvin and look the options in degree C. So you have to convert the Kelvin again into degree C. So you will get this one answer. 
against his pressure P1 volume V temperature 300 Kelvin the pressure is doubled at constant volume now look at here first condition is that at constant volume when the pressure is double then what will be the temperature okay and the second condition is that when the volume is reduced at reduced to quarter at constant pressure then what will be the final temperature of gas now look at here p1 v v is constant so you have to take only v divided by t is equal to we know that pressure is two times of the p1 and v will be same divided by t2 okay now cancel this one and this one you will get 1 over t1 is equal to 2 divided by t2 now you will get t2 as bring this t2 here and t1 here so t2 is equal to 2 multiplied by t1 and look at here the temperature is 300 kelvin so t2 will be 600 kelvin okay this is the final temperature for first condition first condition okay first condition at constant volume now look at here the second condition is that at constant pressure when the volume is reduced to quarter now look at here pressure is constant so p v1 divided by t1 is equal to p v1 look v2 is the quarter of v1 so v1 divided by 4 okay into t2 so cancel these two you will get bring this t2 here okay and t1 here you will get t2 is equal to t1 divided by 4 now keep one thing in your mind that in this case in this case the t1 is this one okay 6600 kelvin for second condition the t1 is 600 kelvin so t2 will be equal to 600 divided by 4 so you will get 150 kelvin the final temperature will be 150 kelvin okay look you have to take this one is t1 here okay in second condition the t1 is 600 kelvin now look at the options here option d is correct okay 18 with the increase in pressure which one of the following is true look at the option a v increases no this one is incorrect okay because the, when we increase the pressure in that case the volume decreases look at the b option volume decreases yes when we increase the pressure in that case the volume decreases and temperature increases this one in isothermal process option a temperature increases gradually no the temperature in isothermal process is constant okay constant volume remains constant no volume changes okay volume changes the pressure also changes the pressure and the volume is not constant look at the d option none in isothermal process the temperature remains constant okay so here option d is correct the process in which charles first law is applicable what is charles first law in charles law volume is directly proportional to temperature at constant pressure okay when the pressure is constant and look in isobaric process we also said that in isobaric process the pressure is constant so here the option c is correct in reversible process the entropy of a system is always constant okay we know that the entropy depend upon the final value and initial value okay now in reversible process what happened the system attains its initial value okay let's suppose this is this is a system okay and this one is the initial point now here when system in the reversible process the system attain its initial point again so in this case the final and the initial value will be this one okay so the in the reversible process the entropy always constant okay like here the final value is equal to initial value the final entropy is equal to initial entropy that's why it remains constant the change in entropy of Carnot engine is zero. Look, we know that Carnot engine is a cyclic process, okay? Cyclic or we can say reversible process. In this case, the final entropy is equal to the initial entropy 
which means that entropy remains constant, but the change in entropy is equal to zero. Final minus initial is equal to zero. The change is equal to zero and the entropy remains constant. The SI unit of entropy is, we know that change in entropy is equal to change in heat divided by temperature. So heat is joule and temperature is Kelvin here, option B is correct. The situation in which all the physical and chemical processes will stop, this is called heat death of the universe. In this situation, the temperature of the universe will be uniform and what will happen, no temperature will be available for useful work. So in that case, this situation is the heat death of the universe. So this one was the last MCQ of thermodynamic. If you like the video, then share it with your friends and subscribe my channel. And if you have any problem in any MCQ, then write in the comment section. Allah Hafiz.